Welcome to The Warehouse. Have you ever heard a sermon and thought, how in the world did he discover that? Or where did he get that idea? Every week at Cornerstone Church, two teams dig into the biblical text that will be taught during our weekend services. We spend hours talking about the text, the context, the culture of the time, you name it. But you can't stuff all that into a 30-minute message. That's where we come in. We're going to show you the stuff in the warehouse that didn't make it to the stage. Hey, Stephanie. Hey. You see a tray of cupcakes. Mm. I do. Which one are you grabbing? <laughs> I'm just laughing because you said Stephanie and Nathan said I do. He so, did it again. He yeah. did that two weeks ago. Right. Wow. Okay. Um, what kind of... This is a hard one for me. So normally I like to find somebody to split the cupcakes with. So then basically I'm getting two <coughs> cupcakes for one size. I've been on the receiving end of that where I've walked perfectly con- <laughs> perfectly content with my cupcake away from the cupcake line. And she's like, hey, Nathan, you want to split that? So <laughs> after you grab it, she's after wanting I, to split? After I grabbed it, she's like, hey, do you want to split that with me? No, that's an agreement. <laughs> that's an agreement no, 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 no. before no, agree. you grab the cupcake. I'm no, not listen. endorsing this behavior. What? Listen, but you get like two for one. So today, you get half for two. What if you have a terrible one? <laughs> listen, listen, it works out. It's good. Like, so today there was a cheesecake one and I had chocolate. So I had both and then I mixed it and it was like cheesecake and chocolate. See again, these are questions I come up with <laughs> just extemporaneously. Off the- <laughs> not that we had cupcakes today. They are not rooted in real world experiences of floods. And any resemblance <laughs> or cupcakes to real cupcakes or is people. purely, purely coincidental. coincidental. You guys can't think though that my like cupcake choice is a bad idea. It's not right? a bad idea. So, no, it's not a bad idea to, to split a cupcake. It's a it's a it's a terrible pattern, and <laughs> your conscience should be speaking to you about forcing a split when somebody's already grabbed a cup. Yeah. I think he, you if turned I were, me down, didn't no, you? No, I did told, turn you down. Yeah, if you I were told not, me no. Right, but if I were not stronger, yeah, if I were not a, a strong Stop. man in that point. See, that, we were right there with each other again. Somebody yeah. has to be strong in their convictions. Uh, convictions. They have to be courageous to be able to say, no, I don't want your pickle cupcake. There was pickle cupcakes today, too. Would you grab that one? No, I Wait, you didn't actually answer the question. You said what you did today, but you have you have a tray of every cupcake imaginable. Which one are you grabbing? I don't know. I don't know because I want them all. Mm. So, so you've entered uh, into an agreement. Uh, Jody was in there earlier, so Jody, you say, "Hey, Jody, Mm. we're about to get cupcakes. You want to split one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And we get so, but we get two. Oh yeah, you don't split one. You trade half of each other's. Yes. What? So what two? Which one do you want? Jody says, I don't know which one I want. What two are you walking away there with? I really, I, mm, this is really hard. I can't. Wow. (laughs) What a non-answer. I like chocolate. (laughs) Chocolate it is. But I like the fun cupcakes too. What's a fun cupcake in your mind? Like the cookie dough one. They got the peanut butter one. They got the snaps. The things you throw on the ground and they go boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right into the middle of it. Yeah. Pop rocks, maybe. Where, where's my tooth? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Jay, what's your favorite cupcake then? A red velvet. Oh, that was easy for you. Cream cheese frosting. Yeah. yeah. With it's basically just chocolate cupcake with red dye in it. Uh, it's more the it's so that cupcake is a cream cheese frosting delivery. Yeah, yeah, system. yeah. So I guess if I could have the cream cheese frosting. I'd probably go with like a, like a, almost like a Reese's themed. Ooh, that's a good choice. Peanut butter kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Italian cream is Mm -hmm. always a good option. Mm -hmm. I like a good Italian cream. Yeah. Nathan? Uh, Recently, I've encountered one of those that had like cookie dough in the middle of it. And that was a game changer for me. See, that was the fun. See, that's a fun cupcake. Did they cop out and leave the eggs out of the... That quote unquote cookie dough? It it probably, I'm guessing it was probably a, a safe. Salmonella free cookie dough. I what's love the, cookie dough. What's Me the too. point in eating something if you're not risking getting salmonella? Well, I mean, guys, if you've ever had salmonella, email us. Where, <laughs> warehouse at cornerstone.team. <laughs> mm. 
For I for the longest time I said salmonella because it's <laughs> spelled like the fish. Yeah. You don't say, <laughs> hey, can I get some salmon on a cedar plank? Yeah. It, oh. it just looks to me like salmonella. it should be salmonella. The fish disease. <laughs> We've just gone off the rails. I think we started going off the rails when Miss Can't Make Up Her Mind over here So she makes people split cups. It was a simple that... question. Listen, <laughs> it could have been 45 I like, seconds listen, except listen, for... Listen, listen, listen. I feel like every time we do these questions, I'm always indecisive. What's that say about you? No. Two weeks ago, uh, With the flood. floods up to your bumper. What are you doing? I'm going. <laughs> okay. Well, so adventure. when it comes to, like, will you be reckless or not? Yes. Then, I yes. Could... Do you, you want to go zip lining? Hey, yes. Well, okay. it's, a, it's a great adventure, man. We got to saddle up our horses. Saddle up your horses. Banner. We got a trail to blaze. What are you guys doing right now? Do the wild blue yonder. No, 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 no. Are we ready to move on? I guess. Segway. Hey, we're in week number. We're <laughs> segway. <laughs> You just said Sometimes segue. you can just say segue. If there's no good segue, you just say segue, new topic. <laughs> segue. Hey, we're starting a new sermon series. We're in week number one of a sermon Uno. series we're calling Come and See. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, give us a little bit of intro for Come and See. I'm stoked to see how, like, Michael kicks it. I thought you said off. soaked. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm stoked. <laughs> you got real nervous. You're, you're going to prep the intro oh, this summer series and you got super nervous. So now you're soaked. This is, this is going to be a neat series because this is like really geared toward um, <laughs> you guys. It's geared toward us being able to invite our friends who like might have been like really turned off by church in the past or not even considered it. And um, we get to take the approach that that Jesus took, um, and then we actually see throughout the throughout the the Gospels specifically. So Jesus um, to a couple of John's disciples, whenever uh, he just says, um, "Come and see." Whenever they say, "Hey, Jesus, where are you staying?" Mm, John, um, is that when John had the message asking Jesus? John, who baptized him, says, mm-hmm. "Hey, are you the one? Or are we supposed to look for another?" Maybe I think it might have been before that. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, there's like Jesus, where are you staying? And he's like. Come and see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, then, then he tells them yeah, that, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. report what you've seen. Yeah. 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 And then you've got like uh, Philip and, and Nathan where uh, – Nathaniel. Nathaniel, sorry. Um, where there's the can, – can Nathan Good come out of Nazareth? And um, he says to his brother, come, why don't you come and see? Um, or you got the Samaritan woman who was – whose life was just like – who Jesus told her everything that she'd ever done and it's blowing her mind and she goes back to the village and says – come and see a man who told me all that I've ever done. Mm. Um, and so with those, the, the invitation, and I think this is so cool, the invitation was never like, hey, you need to go ahead and sign on the dotted line right now and commit your full life to Jesus. Um, the invitation started with, come and see. Why don't you mm. check it out? And so for us, like I think a lot of times we feel like you know we're asking for this major commitment, but there can be some good reasons just to say, hey, why don't you just come and see what's going on at, at church? And so in this series... Um, we, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be specifically like providing some extra little incentives, some, some reasons, some things that might like help some people have a little bit of extra reason why they might want to come and see what's going on. Mm. Um, so I'm, re- I'm remembering, let's see, uh, so for each week, there's going to be the chance to hear a story, um, of a person of faith. So here in, we're going to be going through Hebrews 11 each week. There's going to be a chance that like your friend gets um, a free meal whenever they come, which is really cool. Uh, I think we're doing like some food truck stuff and maybe some other options as well. Partnerships with restaurants. I don't know all the details there, but that's going to be cool. Um, and then uh, their kids are going to have a really fun experience. Um, we're actually doing something neat where we're going to be partnering with, uh, local, uh, other like missions, organizations and stuff. So for every person who comes, um, on this weekend, not just new people, but like every person who comes, we're going to donate $10 to a local mission. Uh, so that's neat. I think I'm missing one. There's one other promotional thing that's going on. There's also videos of yeah, yeah, yeah. people in the congregation. Yeah. So there's going to be a real life a real life story of someone in our region that's been transformed by the gospel. So yeah, it's going to be a really neat series and special opportunities to invite your friends. If you've been um, a little bit on the fence or you've got somebody in your life that you're like, Hey, 
I think this might be a good chance. Then now's the time to just invite him to come and see. Yeah, we were talking with Michael earlier, and and I, I asked, are you like marketing is a weird word, but are you marketing this as a like a leverage to get folks who have been on the fence about inviting someone to invite or to add fuel to their invitation mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, all the above. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah both. both. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, cool. It's going to be neat. Awesome, man. Come well, and see. Yes, please. Come and see. We're going to be, so Nathan did say it. We're going to be Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through seven. And then we're going to uh, dip our toes into Genesis chapter six, just a little bit. Uh, as we talk a bit about Noah, but what, Stephanie, was your big idea? Um, having faith requires trusting obedience. Was Morgan's a good one? Morgan's, hold on. I, can't. She, she I didn't took, have it up. Okay, yeah, Morgan wasn't here yesterday, so he sent Stephanie all of her stuff. And fun, <laughs> fun fact, in the meeting, we had to guess every time she talked, which thing she said, was it Stephanie or was it Morgan? Mm-hmm. I think I won that. So. Okay. Um, Morgan's was faith is trusting God's promises are true before we see them. Mm. That was Morgan. Yeah. I just said it was Morgan. <laughs> Nathan? Mine was faith is clinging to the objective reality of God's faithfulness. Mm. I said, pleasing God is simpler than you could imagine. I like it. Context. Do we need to bring Oh yeah. some context? Oh this? yeah. It's been so long since we've had some, good meaty mm. like because we've just been in the same place for 12 weeks and now we get to take a little trip over to the book of hebrews mm-hmm. i love hebrews I'm why just, do you love hebrews it was the first yep. okay uh, why do you like the why do you love the book of hebrews oh. i this was like the first book that i really studied um oh interesting when you became a christian no when um, you no nope. re- just let me say it <laughs> Um, whenever I was leading my Bible study years ago, we read Acts and then we went into Hebrews afterwards and Hebrews was the first book that like really, I was like, oh my goodness, there's so many layers to unpack here. Mm. And so it caused me to really start studying the word of God. And so it was just a book that I really love and it has a special place in my heart. Like Mm. all of the, all of the Bible does, but this book Mm. specifically is just what caused my love and passion for the knowledge of the word to grow. Very cool. Yeah. I feel like you were just afraid of the rest of the books of the Bible getting jealous of Hebrews. <laughs> <laughs> just then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's just like, it's I right. mean, all of the books of yeah. the Bible have a special place. Malachi, you're cool too, man. You're, you're cool. cool too. <laughs> How did you guys know? That's, That's what you felt. That was my fear. They're that was gonna, your fear. They're going to feel sad and left yeah. out. I still remember you coming up to me and like, Say, ask me what I thought about Melchizedek. Yes. That was, <laughs> yes. that was one of the moments. It was, I went to Nathan and Michael and Dustin and I was like, okay, tell me about this guy that I've never heard of. Let's have a conversation. And they're like, what in the world? And I'm yeah. like, I have all of this and I need uh, to know more. King of Salem. Uh, mm-hmm. God, he, he got tithed to. Yeah. It was a huge thing. And it, yeah, it's Hebrews 7. And so yeah. it like mm. changed. Was that Jesus? We're not having that conversation no. today. <laughs> All right. Question. What kind of context do we need to bring into <laughs> this conversation? Um. So who is it written to is one of the questions like we like to start with. So the tone... Leave a space. What? Listener. Who is Hebrews written to? Okay. Uh, the tone of the book assumes that the readers are Christians. This indicates that the book must have been meant for a Jewish community that had now converted to Christianity. But yeah. we don't know which particular community. Correct. It doesn't have like an uh, an addressee. Right, like Galatians and Ephesians yeah. and... Or an addresser. Yeah. Which causes more right. fun discussions. Yeah, so we don't know who the author of Hebrews is. Mm-hmm. People have made their assumptions over the years. Like what? Like Paul is a big yeah. one. Why do you think that is? Why do I think people assume it's Paul or why do I not think it's Paul? Because I can answer that one way better than why I can assume. Okay. Why do you think it's not Paul? Because it's not his writing style. Normally, Paul always signed the end of all of his letters Mm -hmm. and just the way he writes is not similar Mm -hmm. to Hebrews. Yeah. He didn't. Hebrews isn't full of 
Somebody telling people to shape up or ship out. Wow. Okay. That's all you see Paul writing? Not all, but it's pretty distinctive. Mm, okay. What about you? Why do people assume that it is Paul? I mean, probably just because he wrote so much of the New Testament. And right. like, it's, I'd say also like um, one of the, one of the commentaries I was looking at um, uh, said that like, it's really surprising that this is anonymous since without doubt, the author of Hebrews ranks with Paul and the fourth gospel as one of the three great theologians of the New Testament. So there's like such rich theology mm -hmm. in this book. And also, I just really love to read Paul. Yeah. So it's like, I like to assume that other books that I like. Yeah. And it was written by Paul. Hebrews was one of the, one of the books on kind of the border of being canonized because of that fact. Yeah. Because there was so much weight put on. Uh, these were apostolic uh, authority. Yeah. These are yeah. apostles who wrote this thing. And now we don't know who this was. Mm -hmm. um, so is Lydia one of the leading contenders as well? well that's Stephanie's favorite. I don't know why. <laughs> I think you just like the idea. No, I just really, and I really like Lydia, but I don't think Lydia <laughs> wrote Hebrews. I mean, but if it was going to be do. a female, it would be Priscilla. Yeah. Or Phoebe. Yeah. Junia could have written it. Right. Yeah. We'll just keep naming females from the New Testament. But I mean, Priscilla would probably be the most likely female, largely because like there's evidence that she was highly educated and she took part in like, um, she helped uh, educate mm -hmm. Apollos. I think you're right. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so she, she and her husband Aquila mm -hmm. helped um, Nailed train it. him up. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then there has been assumptions of Apollos and Barnabas. Mm -hmm. um, Apollos is one of the leading contenders. Yeah. He used to knew. And used to know an old guy in Hallidayboro, Illinois, swore up and down. He would he would go at you for hours about Apollos's hmm. authorship. Of I Hebrews. guess, like, I just I'm not that concerned about who wrote it. Mm -hmm. Of like, man, we have to get it figured out on who wrote this. Yeah. It it's just. Well, I think that's good because I don't think we're ever gonna figure it out. <laughs> so one somebody that gets quoted a lot in this realm is um, third century Christian origin. Um, that's his name. I'm not mm. just saying the word right. origin, like where it originated. Origin with an E. Yeah. Origin. Yeah. Gen. Uh, and he wrote, who it was who wrote the epistle, only God knows the truth. Mm -hmm. um, there's another modern uh, commentator who said Hebrews is in many respects the riddle of the New Testament. Nothing is known of its origin. It stands without father, without mother, without genealogy, like Melchizedek. Hey. hey, not too shabby. So you use the word epistle for those who do not know what an epistle is. What is it? What is it, Stephanie? It's a letter. Why did I want to do it? A little anticlimactic there. <laughs> it's a letter. <laughs> <laughs> like A. That was okay. B, C. <laughs> oh my God. What else? Uh, Any other context? Um, I'm thinking, doesn't... Okay, I'm trying to find my notes. So oh. some have assumed that Hebrews was likely written before 70 AD because, um, with comparison like to the destruction of the temple because mm -hmm. they were still talking about sacrifices mm -hmm. here in Hebrews and why sacrifices is not what you need anymore. So, mm -hmm. so some would assume that this temple was still standing. Yeah, which, I mean, a lot of his arguments would have been definitely reinforced if the temple had been destroyed like <laughs> he might not have to make some of these arguments about why jesus is better he could have just said like well guys the temple's destroyed so obviously it's not going to last but anyway so that it, it is it's an argument from silence yeah you know the fact that it doesn't say something but also it's i've heard people say that it's like an argument from deafening silence like Ooh. it's it's a pretty strong point so Definitely most likely, silence. I like that. Most likely before 70 AD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one, so um, another common commentary I read, it was Thistleton. Um, and who is this? Who is Thistleton? Thistleton. Um, is he, just... he, he writes in the Erdman's commentary, which is a well-respected exegetical okay. commentary. Um, oh, professor? Researcher? I would... I would assume so. I didn't go and check into his. Okay. He, uh, so he he would be one of the contributors. He's with um, Dunn, who's a, like a 
a really well-regarded um, professor of like Old Testament and, and Jewish literature. Dunn and Thistleton. Dunn and Thistleton. Um, anyway, so uh, he talks about how um, what Hebrews is doing is really the work of hermeneutics, which is interpreting scripture. And I think that's a really cool way to think about it because what we see throughout the book of Hebrews is uh, a look back to the Old Testament and the ways of um, that that the law was uh, carried out and mm-hmm. the sacrificial system and and all of that, um, and it was brought forward into a modern um, cultural application for them, mm-hmm. um, and it was interpreted through the lens of the gospel, which I think mm-hmm. is just really cool. Then mm. when we're getting a, several really good snapshots in this series of just mm-hmm. that talking mm-hmm. through what those heroes of the faith Mm -hmm. did and how it applies to faith and pleasing God. Yeah. Yeah. But so, I mean, if you're looking at like the major theme of Hebrews, it's entire, it's, it's to convince, um, the, it's readers, the hearers that Jesus is better Mm -hmm. than the sacrificial system. He's better Mm -hmm. than angels. He's better than any high priest that they've ever had. Um, that they don't need to return to that for their salvation. Um, and so there's been speculation on like, what was the, what was the cause or the crisis? What was the, the, the occasion of the letter? Like what caused it to be written? And so some would say like false teachers, Mm -hmm. which was something that happened throughout the early church where people Mm -hmm. would come in behind the preaching of the gospel and say, no, you also need to be circumcised. You also need to keep the ceremonial law and all that. Um, or you need to keep the law. Um, and then others would say, no, it's, it might not have been false teachers. This seems to be more about the individuals and their own personal desire to return to the sacrificial system for their forgiveness because it felt more, maybe more tangible. It's what they knew. It's what all their families still mm-hmm. did. Um, or another uh, option I read was that like, maybe this particular group of Christians thought that they could um, just keep their Christianity kind of secret, like as if it were an approved sect of Judaism, like, Hey, you know, we're just going to kind of, we'll still keep doing all the normal stuff and we'll just in our hearts know that we believe in Jesus. Um, and so for him saying, uh, for whoever's writing this, him or her, Hmm. um, whoever's writing this, uh, for them to be saying Jesus is better. Ooh, that's good. Well, all right then. How's about we dive in Hebrews chapter 11 verses one through seven. We'll start there. We'll go one through six first. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, Though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch, who was, uh, nope, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Hmm. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> What you got? Play the bumper video. (laughs) I was just going to define a little bit of faith. Please define a little bit of faith. (laughs) I like it. Uh, So faith, according to the Bible, is not blind. More than half of the verses in the book of Hebrews are dedicated to explaining reasons and evidence to accept the new covenant in Jesus Christ. So a lot of people try to do the whole blind faith pe- thing, and that's not what this book is even supporting or saying that we need mm-hmm. to do. It is fully trusting in mm-hmm. Jesus and yeah. what he has done. That's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's one thing that faith is not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is something faith is? The assurance of things hoped for oh. and the conviction of things not seen. Ooh. But we we found that like we didn't feel like we're going to disagree a little bit with the um, translators of the ESV mm, here. Yeah. Like whenever you look at other translations, Jay, take it away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, because, so, so the ESV uses faith being assurance of things hoped for and conviction of things not seen for those of us who grew up and, and memorized it from mm. the King James version. You remember what the King James is? Nope. Evidence of things 
hoped for hoped for and the no um no sub yeah and the substance of the the substance, substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen or the other way around it might be the other way around it okay. sounds more poetic the other way around uh but yeah so and again evidence and substance might even work a little more clearly than assurance and and conviction because assurance uh, and conviction are like at the psychological the states of things hoped for the evidence of things substance not. than evidence okay mm-hmm. But yeah, assurance and conviction like refer more to our psychological, um, like how convinced we are or how assured we feel about something. Right. Especially as we talk about convictions around here, mm-hmm. our convictions are, are in that area yeah. where we have beliefs about things and then we have convictions. Yeah. It's the thing that we are convinced of. Yeah. Yeah. And whereas like, what are, what are some better or alternative ways to interpret the word yeah. that? Yeah, I really liked what the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible, had to say. So uh, Hebrews 11, 1 in the CSB says, Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof mm-hmm. of what's not seen. Uh, so just in my head, I, I I know I read on here a lot, but I enjoy being able to use words that are are easy to grasp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to say assurance, assurance. I don't. I never use assurance yeah. in, the daily, in my daily life. And conviction, what does that even mean? Um, but here, we, reality and proof are pretty easy to grasp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Thanks. You're welcome. What else you got? What did Morgan have? Hold on, let me see. Morgan had some good stuff, I bet. Or at least we Faith attributed... Faith equals things not seen, being certain of the unseen or not yet seen. Faith gives substance to our hope. So he mentioned like two different categories there, the things that are unseen or the things not yet seen, which I think are, I think is really interesting because, um, I think those are two different, very approach, very different approaches. Mm. Um, and I think whenever we look through, um, at least through this chapter, the way it's faith is being used, which faith occurs, um, 18 times in this by faith. By faith. The, the phrase by faith, by faith is repeated 17 times. Repeated 17 times. After the first time. After this first time. Yeah. Um, in this chapter. In this chapter, yeah. yeah. And so it's obviously like the major theme. Um, and there seems to be like, um, there seems to be a temporal component to it. So like a time element, yeah. like where you're at in the timeline and trusting um, that God is able to do something that, you know, is not in your current moment of the timeline. So whether that's looking back to the beginning and believing that what he said he did mm-hmm. to create the whole universe out of nothing, mm-hmm. that that is actually what he did. Yeah. Verse three. Yeah. 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 I wasn't there to see that. So I have to take him at his word on that. And I'm not able to guarantee the future. So I have to believe that he actually can, um, that the thing he says he's going to do in the future, that's what he's going to do. So it seems to me that the temporal side of it is probably what's in mind here, especially whenever we get down to like um, Noah. Yeah. So his faith was not just like belief in an unseen reality, you know, a spiritual reality versus the physical reality, but it was a belief in um, what was going to happen in the future mm. versus what he was seeing right there yeah. in the right. moment. That's I- Oh, go ahead. No, you go. I was just going to say yesterday when you were talking about that, I felt like that was so easy to grasp and understand what you were saying. Like, so sometimes we can tend to make things like have a really big definition and not Mm. be able to tangibly hold on to the things that are said. So Mm. not like in general, Mm. not just on the podcast. I'm saying like in general, we tend to do that in life. So putting it in a perspective of like, we are trusting in God to fulfill the things that he promises us. Mm -hmm. And regardless if that's something that he's done in the past or something that he tends to do with us in the Mm -hmm. future, it's like this trust element that Mm -hmm. we have built. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the distinction Michael's going to make this weekend is the difference between the faith that's talked about in Hebrews 11 and the word of faith movement, the prosperity gospel, the name it and claim it uh, uh, way of going about things. And us talking about the temporal uh, meaning, the temporal mm-hmm. way of looking at this this section, it, it really struck home because uh, 
I think we do really need to think about this difference between us thinking faith is this thing that we can just magically make something appear mm-hmm. versus being rooted in the in the mm-hmm. timeline mm-hmm. that uh, so um, uh, Seth and um, Madison Barry are, are mm-hmm. getting ready to have their third child. Yeah, mm-hmm. and one of the th- as we were praying for him recently, uh, mm-hmm. uh, at, they were at, at the church, and one of the things I just kind of felt like. Maybe, maybe the Holy Spirit was wanting them to, mm-hmm. to, to remember is that, that God's already there. Mm-hmm. They're still, they're still days, weeks out from being in the, in the hospital room, delivering their baby. Um, but God's already there. And so they can rest easy because they're not going anywhere that he's not. Yeah. And, and having that anchor that our faith is having proof of things that we don't see mm-hmm. is that we are that the same God who did create the universe is the same God who's going to be there at the end uh, as as we see Jesus face to face and and that really that was just a fun discussion for me about that mm-hmm. faith is that temporal aspect mm-hmm. that we don't see it yet but we're going to see it because Jesus has said it yeah. yeah and I think that's what like even saving faith for us requires because I wasn't there to see Jesus die on a cross. I would and experience it. So I have to believe that whenever the Bible says that that's what happened, yeah. that that's what happened. And whenever it says that Jesus was, um, that he was crucified for our justification uh, so that we could have forgiveness of sins, yeah. I have to believe that what God says was happening is what actually was happening and that it wasn't just, uh, you know, the, um, some ruthless men killing an, an innocent man, you know? And then on the flip side of it, I have to believe that whenever judgment day rolls around and I stand before God, um, that really what he's going to judge me on is um, whether my faith was in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's like there's the faith is is that temporal element of like, I can't see it yet, but I, I trust you right now for the things that you've said are going to happen. Mm. Yeah. Man, cool. Anything else? One through three? Um, so I, I think anytime you're studying a passage, one of the first things I do is, um, Anytime I'm studying a passage, one of the first things I do is highlight repeated words and phrases. Um, so obviously you've got um, faith, uh, by faith, by faith, through faith. Um, the other one that gets repeated a lot is uh, commendation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, was it four times in what I read? Today? Four times for commendation. And then uh, relatedly, you've got pleased God, which I would say is like, it's a very closely related theme to commendation for him to commend, for him to speak well of. Um, and I think it's just neat that like, what's the outcome of faith? What's the desired outcome? It's that we would receive God's con- <laughs> commendation. <laughs> it is. Sorry. We talked about how close <laughs> condemnation and commendation are in their pronunciation. Um, yeah. You notice and- I hit them pretty hard. Commendation. Yeah. Uh, because I was in that place too. So like what we long for is um, to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this people of old, it's referring to the, the ancients, it's referring to their elders, it's referring to the patriarchs, the, um, all the people that are getting ready to be in this list. Mm -hmm. Um, Not just patriarchs, I guess, because it's, it's not just the forefathers, but it's like all these saints that have gone before um, their, their present time. Yeah, so great examples of godliness all had different circumstances and personalities, but they all had one in co- one thing in common, which is faith. Mm-hmm. Man, that's good. So that's one through three. Four and five, we jump into the first two examples. And I kind of stepped on a little bit, but mm-hmm. the, this, this uh, right. distinction between the prosperity gospel and what Hebrews 11 is talking about. Mm. And um, I'm trying to remember if you brought up the, the, the cool pattern that we see in Hebrews 11 and how it starts with Abel and it ends. Um, uh, who's Michael. well, you go ahead. It, it was, was you Michael. or was it Michael? Yeah. Michael brought it up. Oh, okay. Just having never seen before. And I, I thought it was, yeah, very profound. You've got Abel. And then by the end, it's like, and all these uh, who were sawn in two and like that kind of stuff. It it starts and ends with sacrifice, which is yeah. like so anti the prosperity gospel. Yeah. That by faith, Abel was able to offer, um, to make an acceptable offering that got him killed. 
yeah. by faith, these people were able to be obedient to the place where they'd be sawn in half. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like sacrifice and suffering. And then it leads right into what Jesus did. Yeah. Uh, God coming to earth and being the son of suffering. Yeah. I thought it was neat how like the first examples that are set here is Abel and Enoch mm. and how Abel was the first person to be murdered and Enoch was taken up and never had experienced death. So That's just wild. the two of those. We didn't talk about that yesterday. Yeah, oh. I kept silent on that one. Whoa, why? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that was cool. Good. That was fun. Okay, thanks. Um, Go back so, and say that when we do it. Interesting. So Abel, Abel would have been the first person to die. Yes. Yeah. In the Bible. And then Enoch was, he right never there. experienced death. The first, first person, person to, not to die. Not to die. What do you mean in the Bible? Yeah, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I, 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 the, yeah, the I don't know why. As like, we read, the first we come across uh, reading, uh, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> like, I we're mean, not, if you, we're if not you believe that myth, like, <laughs> Jay, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, we're not reading Shakespeare. We're, we're, in, we're in the Bible. Yes. Not To Kill a Mockingbird. Yes. Um, that's not what, that, I know that's not Shakespeare. <laughs> so that's one through three. Open up suffering. Close chapter 11 with suffering. Yeah. That is the distinction because too often even prosperity gospel thinking can seep into those of us who would say the prosperity gospel isn't a thing. Mm. Um, a- as we suffer, we kind of suffer and we think, oh, this must be because my faith is too small. Mm. I'm not believing well enough. Kind of a almost a reverse prosperity mm. gospel kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I lack because I don't believe enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so like prosperity gospel, if you're, if you if that's a new term for you and stuff, like it's specifically the people who would say, "Hey, you know, if we have enough faith, we should uh, we should never experience sickness, we should mm-hmm. never experience calamity, we should never experience um, like poverty, mm-hmm. um, because all of these things have been provided for us. You know, we have the the riches of a father who has who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and mm-hmm. Jesus uh, by by his stripes were healed, and um, so uh, our they would say that our job is to um, like to claim those things right. they're mm-hmm. they're currently in existence in the spiritual realm and we right. need to lay hold of them and bring them into the physical realm um through faith and if if we don't have them it's because we haven't expressed enough faith and it's like more pervasive than you think yeah um not just in like i mean there's all kinds of tv preachers that that land there youtube um youtube preachers but then also like there's some ways that i think it just like accidentally infiltrates our thinking oh yeah so not even though i wouldn't you know even for people who wouldn't say yeah that's what i believe they would they would still think um yeah i'm sick because i don't have enough faith or if i just believed a little harder then i i wouldn't have lost my job or i wouldn't be going through this uh financial difficulty what's wrong with me which is so sad because that's putting a lot on you and not anything on what jesus has done yeah so that makes me sense. Yeah, because I, I think part of that is it. Some of this has to be on me because it's it's too simple a thing just to trust Jesus with eternity, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and so that that's too simple an idea. So I have to be responsible for some of it. Yeah, I got to do some of the lifting here, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Which is not taking God at His word. It's not having faith. Yeah. It's it's believing that like. On, on Judgment Day, um, what God is actually going to say is like, I mean, yeah, I did that with Jesus, but like you needed to do some stuff too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead. Anything else? Four and five? Yeah. my I just had more on Abel and Enoch. Like um, regardless of how one was spared from death and one witness, uh, one had a mur- like was murdered and mm. had a tremendous death like just the the two they both were considered righteous mm-hmm. so and just how much god can still bless you on mm. that like yeah. yeah i my brain is like shutting down no it's good that. though you're <laughs> saying like you're saying that like you receive they both receive the commendation of god which is what they're both ultimately after it's right. why they were obedient um yeah that's good mm. Yeah, and they didn't they didn't write great treatises on God or life with God. Abel chose the best of his flock. 
right. to sacrifice to him when his brother just picked whatever he had, kind of leftovers. Yeah. Um, so Abel brought the best, and God saw that, and it pleased him. Enoch, just as Enoch, walked, he walked with God. With God. Enoch. And walked then there was no more. Enoch. Yeah. You're uh, saying Enoch, and I'm saying Enoch. Which one is it? I don't yes, know. and. Okay, cool. Um, And so... Yeah, walk with God and then was no more. Ah, 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 what a great that? end that would be for. Hey, wait, where am I now? Oh, I'm not yeah. on Earth anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Um, also, a uh, listener quiz: Who is the other person in the Old Testament that didn't see death? Hmm. Hmm? Dun, dun, dun. Hmm? Uh, email us your answers. Yes, warehouse at cornerstone team. The winner will get a shout out and a pickle cupcake. Oh, I was that you'll like... have to split with Stephanie. We nope. will email you the cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> Postage is expensive. Do you know the answer? Yes, but we're not going to give it away. We want well, we people. We can now. No, no, honor no, no, system. no. We work no. on the honor system. No, no, no. I want somebody to actually okay. send it in to us. No, do not answer it. You think they would wait and email us till after somebody gave the answer? Yes. <laughs> but just don't. Okay, go on. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't. I am Verse here. Six. Just don't think Nike. <laughs> Reverse Nike. Yeah. Ver and what so with that verse six, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. That's I I, I was struck that the Hall of Fame, I think I might have even mentioned this already, but but I was struck by the fact that this Hall of Faith is talking only about faith but is proving faith by the works of those mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's talking about these people were full of faith and here's what they did. Mm -hmm. uh, and it it's reminded of James telling mm -hmm. us that uh, you say you have faith without works. I'm going to show you my, my faith through my works, mm -hmm. by my works. I'm going to uh, show you the fruit of what God is doing in me. And I'm going to live this life. And through that, you're going to see my faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? One through six? Uh, I think six. What, I'm trying to think of like, this feels like a kind of common sense statement in verse six. Um, specifically, the second part. Um, whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists. We talked about this some. It's like, well, mm -hmm. duh. Like, if you don't believe he exists, then you don't want to draw near to him. Yeah. Right. I think seems like a, might have brought that up. Seems like an easy step one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that he rewards those who seek him, um, which also seems relatively straightforward. Um, and kind and of I strange, wonder, if we're being honest, yeah. that he, re because again, we're kind of, um, those of us who are familiar, familiar, pardon me, with, with the prosperity gospel, and we don't like the, we, we don't like the idea of what we think a reward is. Mm -hmm. We think reward could be a Cadillac right. or that mansion that I'm naming. So it's not that. I haven't claimed it yet, but I'm still naming it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we hear that, and he rewards those who seek him. What does that even mean? Yeah. Which, I mean, this is all underneath the the primary clause of without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. And so I think we would have to say that the reward is pleasing God. I mean, the whole thing throughout here is um, by, by faith, the people of old receive their commendation that a... Abel was commended, Enoch was commended. And so like the point here is that the reward is the commendation. It's mm -hmm. pleasing God. It's mm -hmm. having his favor, which is like the best thing. Yeah. It's the best thing. And that's only garnered by having faith in him, by mm -hmm. believing what he says. Right. And I thought impossible was the super strong word that he used here. He didn't use difficult. He used, mm -hmm. or she used impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is true. Priscilla was very poetic. I'm not saying it's Priscilla. <laughs> and that's, I'm trying to think of like, you know, uh, Jesus talking about like, it's easier for a, uh, a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter mm. into the kingdom of heaven, uh, kingdom of heaven. And the disciples are like, it's impossible. And, he, and then Jesus says, um, with ding, God, ding, ding. yeah, man, it's impossible for God. All things are possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think you have, I think that's a great example of like, yeah, faith in God is what does it. You know, mm. anyway. All right. Ready to move on? Yeah. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, 
constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. I cannot just, I cannot imagine being Noah and having God like appear to me, talk to me, tell me like, hey, you're going to build this ark. It's going to be huge. And he does it precisely to the way that God tells Mm -hmm. him to. To a T, to a, like, and does it perfectly the way mm. that God instructed him to. He obeys him. And yet he, they had not ever seen a flood yet to this mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And yet he's like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. It's not just going to be like a small flood. This is going to be a huge flood. But what is right. a flood? Yeah. Right. It's not, it's not, yeah. It's not just that he said, hey, build this ark and put it in Kentucky and charge people to come see it. He said, <laughs> he said, <laughs> that, I'm a, that ark is pretty cool though. Just throwing that out there. I'll take your word for it. He says, I'm going to kill everybody. You build an ark, I'm going to save you and your family. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he, like Noah here is trusting God no matter what and him even not knowing what the future holds. He's just trusting what his God says and yeah. that mm-hmm. he's going to do what God has told him to do. Yeah. Is he like, hey, what's a boat? What is yeah. an ark? What are you talking about? And so God's like, yeah, I'll give you the directions. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I whenever I hear Ark, I always think of Moses too because that's what his little oh basket, little basket. was called was an Ark as well. Mm. It was not a bushel. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Yes. Oh. Parker's going to put the uh, nope, episode no. timestamp no. right here. No, please. thanks, man. Appreciate you, Parker. <laughs> <sighs> um, and yeah, so this and this faith wasn't just um. Like you said, Jay, it wasn't just God showing up saying, hey, I'm going to kill everybody. Um, and no saying, OK, I believe you. But it was um, like slaving. We don't we don't yes. know how long, but it was years. Um, so uh, from what we read, like on the outside, like longest it could have been was 75 years, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But like no, no real way to to know how long it took. But this would not have been an easy process. Yeah. Um, so years and years and years. Uh, people also ridiculing him while he's doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, all all the while, them saying, you're an idiot, Noah. Um, what do you mean a flood? What even is that? Mm. What are you building? And he's looking up at a at a blue sky, baby blue sky, and saying, but God said. Yeah. So like you were saying that um, by this, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he's condemning them by telling them these right, horrible he's not things like out there and right. saying like y'all are idiots yeah you're all gonna die or anything like that his godly con- conduct conduct there it is there it is alone um mm-hmm. without preaching is what was condemning to them mm-hmm. yeah in reverent fear mm-hmm. he constructed an ark in awe of of what god told him of what god said he's gonna do uh, and that's one of the questions I had today. No matter how long it took him to build this thing, mm-hmm. a couple of years, a couple of decades, mm-hmm. uh, more, no matter how long it took, it, he did it in reverent fear. And I was just wondering, you know, on day 830, is he still in reverent fear as he's grabbing his lunchbox and heading out? All right, darling, I'm starting on the yeah. second deck today. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if that, so that reverent fear is like mm-hmm. believing in God. I I wonder if there's also a little bit of like, an urgency to it mm. of like, what if I don't get it? Like I got to bust my butt. Cause yeah. it's like, what if I don't get it done? Well, Looking yeah. up at lunchtime and seeing any clouds in the sky. No, see. And I would be like, no, I wouldn't think that right. because he trusts God enough to know that he's not going to send the flood until he's done. Yeah. I don't think he's, I don't think he's literally thinking like yeah. God's going to do it before I'm done. But I do think there would be a sense of urgency. urgency. To it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm not just, I, I know. Yeah. Uh, so this more is my around. hobby arc. <laughs> <laughs> taking forever yeah. uh morgan has reverent fear noah was showing proper respect to god holy fear a reverent submission mm. yeah and it's it's interesting when you look at uh the word that we translate reverent fear um that word in the greek isn't found anywhere else in the new testament making it a hapax legomenon do, 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 do. very nice we haven't had one in a while we haven't uh, for like those it. of you new to this, sorry, that was weird. Yeah, that was pretty strange. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hapax legomenon is, is a phrase used for a word in Greek that's only used in the New Testament once. Mm. And this is one of them. There are a lot more than I thought. 
when I when I started this quest of uh, making you guys Finding all hum them. every or sing every time we say it. Um, yeah, it happens quite often. And so, you know, uh, one of the ways that we can kind of uh, tune uh, uh, zoom in on like the fullness of a word that has translated one way in one version and maybe another next is by seeing it, you, how it's used mm-hmm. in other places. And it's kind of, you can't do that here. Right? Right. And so reverent fear, you're like, well, that's what we got. Mm-hmm. So, and so by, and so by this, he condemned the world and you, you said it. So constructing an ark in reverent fear is the, by this mm-hmm. crazy, yes. not believing the right thing, but putting his boots on and grabbing his lunch pail and doing what God told him to do. Yeah. Him building the ark was an act of being obedient and it was him doing something like his faith, him responding in faith was obedience and obedience was building something that he didn't even know what he was building and why he was building Mm -hmm. it really like, yes, he knew there was a flood coming. Yes. He knew like this was going to knock out his whole entire household or would knock out his whole entire household if he didn't save him in this way. But it's in faith we do something. Yeah. So. And he was already old. I think, it's, old yeah. I think it's so interesting to, like, I'm just picking up on some of the um, parallels between our experience and what it takes for us to um, to really place faith in Jesus. Like, we have mm-hmm. to believe that there really is going to be a day of judgment and destruction mm-hmm. and that hell is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Like, Cause that's something we can't see yet. It's so like, that's a, that's a reality that for some people is just like, yeah, right. And so it's like, if I don't believe that, um, then I don't think there's any reason, you know, that I need saving. Um, and then, so he had to believe that there was a flood coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He also had to believe that the ark was going to be enough for his family mm-hmm. to be saved. Um, which I think is very parallel to us having to trust that the way that's been made through Jesus is yeah. sufficient. Um, that there's not some other path we need to take. Um, and and then, so like, yeah, belief on both of those, that judgment day is coming, God's made a way of salvation, and so I need to be obedient to the way, to stepping into the way that he's made. Yeah. Anything else? Do we need to pull anything out of Genesis 6 specifically to talk about it? Because we kind of overviewed yeah, I don't what so. Noah I don't, did. Yeah, I don't feel like that. Like, I would say like Noah's actions um, in contrast to the behavior of the nation of Israel, which they wouldn't have been the nation of Israel at that time. Right. But um, it's just like a huge difference of what was going on at that time mm-hmm. and just how much he trusted the Lord mm-hmm. where nobody else was. Yeah. Yeah, so just overviewing Noah's part in it that he was blameless in his generation, a righteous mm-hmm. man. He walked with God like mm-hmm. Enoch did. Enoch did. <laughs> he they they walked with God. Uh the earth was corrupt, mm-hmm. filled with violence. Uh, and so he's determined to make an end of it for the earth is filled with violence. I will destroy them with the earth. And so then verses 14 through um, 21, he tells Noah how to build the ark and who he's going to bring to put in the ark. Yeah. And then verse 22, it just says simply, Noah did this. He mm-hmm. did all that God commanded him. Mm-hmm. Man, that's so hard for like, sometimes it takes a lot to be obedient to the mm-hmm. Lord. And I just, yeah, I'm like, man, good job, Noah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. sometimes when things get hard, we just want to run and cling to other things instead of Jesus. Yeah. But, Definitely. And I think <laughs> I'm thinking about like how, you know, Ephesians says it's like it's by grace we're saved through faith. Mm-hmm. And even this is not, you know, of ourselves that we could boast, but it's a gift from God. I think about like how did Noah in a blameless gener I'm sorry, in a corrupt generation end up being righteous and walking with God? Mm. Because faith is a gift from God. Um and then we see even on like right after the right after the flood finishes, like there's this terrible um, like Noah immediately gets drunk and has this yes. weird episode. That's like, it's just weird. Read the story. Yeah. Um, and so you see like, man, Noah's not like just a, a flawless guy. 
Right. It's not that he just nailed everything and did everything perfectly. So I think us recognizing that it's by God's grace that Noah found favor in God's eyes and mm. that he had the faith to do what he needed to yeah. do. Anyway, I think that's big. Mm. I also, I was thinking about like, this is something I was just speculating on a little bit yesterday or pontificating, I guess. <laughs> I'm just that's thinking fun. about I like when you pontificate. Um, I wonder what kind of stories they had about God at this point, because like mm, yeah. in, from what's recorded that we have of, of tradition, it's like, um, Adam and Eve, so creation, fall, and then you've got Cain and Abel, and then a list of names, and mm-hmm. then Noah. Mm-hmm. And so as far as like, for us, we can read all of scripture and have so much more, so much confidence to, uh, that we can see the way that God has consistently interacted with his his people and that he's consistently kept his promises. Yeah. I wonder what I wonder what Noah had to go off mm. of to believe that God wasn't just making this up. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because there's no evidence that God spoke to him before right. this instance, right. uh, because that would have done it. Uh, you know, you hear voice calling out of the cloud. Oh, all right. That might change my belief. Well, but I'm sorry. I'm like trying now to go through the genealogy, but wasn't Noah's grandfather Enoch? Yeah. So like him just seeing his grandfather like disappear one day hmm. and then his dad was Methuselah. Right? Was it Methuselah? No, his dad was not. No, it wasn't. No. Enoch's dad or? Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. Noah. Who was Noah's dad? Where's if my brain? If you know who Noah's dad was. <laughs> no, 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 no. Email us. Warehouse at Cornerstone. I can't think. Uh, his dad was not Elijah. Uh, Lamech. It, yeah. Okay. So and then, then. Methuselah was his grandpa. Methuselah and was Lamech. Was... Okay. Before that. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm not implying that like God had been doing nothing up right, to that right, right, point. Right. I'm just like curious what he had to, uh, and either way. So even if there's tons of stories in that genealogy that are missing, we have so much more whenever we look at the, the entire story of scripture mm-hmm. to pull from, to believe that like God has always been faithful to his people mm-hmm. and yeah. he will continue to be faithful in the future. Yeah. Which sorry, I'm sorry, Siri. <laughs> Which, like, leads me to, like, what I'm excited for. Yeah, the perfect segue. Thank you. Segue twice. (laughs) Um, Just looking back at the examples that we have here, that we should feel confident that God will fulfill his promises, even if we don't live long enough to witness them fully Mm -hmm. and realize that in, like, our earthly lives that Mm -hmm. we can trust in a God who is faithful Mm -hmm. and keeps his promises. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Abel's commendation didn't come until glory, right? Right. It didn't come until he's standing face to face with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did I just get murdered? Oh, uh, hey, God. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I feel kind of dirty laughing about that. I don't know. (laughs) About did I just get murdered? It was a very dark, macabre moment. Yeah, it wasn't the best. What are you excited to hear, Jay? Ah, so, um, so historically, I have a not, so... So faith as an action, like faith as a verb, uh, doing what we know to be true. And on the, like on the front side of that, um, I, I even have a hard time sometimes believing what I know to be true. Mm. Um, and so I think, I think hearing about, <clears throat> excuse me, hearing about um, not just the connection of faith to our hands and feet, but but faith planted deep in our hearts mm. um, is not just what I'm excited to hear uh, Sunday, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> as I'm um, more and more like getting a grasp of the things that I don't really believe that I know to be true, which is a really s- s- strange thing to say that I know things to be true that I don't necessarily believe mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A- as I get a grasp on those things. And then... Um, really learning to put them down deep and then start walking them, walking out, walking them out uh, is, is something I'm not just excited to hear, mm-hmm. but I'm excited to get back to doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think for me, it's just like to have a bunch of people in the room that you all have invited your friends and stuff. And for them to hear the, 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 like how confoundingly simple mm. faith is. Yeah. That's like, it's, it's difficult, but not 
but not complex, I guess. It's like, it's hard to have faith in in God because we want to contribute more to it. But like what it actually takes is simple faith. Right. Yeah. The the challenge of our lives is to stop adding things Mm -hmm. to what we think our Mm -hmm. faith has to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, is to strip it down to its very foundation and that foundation trust and obey yeah there's no other way that's it be happy and be happy in jesus but to trust and obey it's a hymn my kids love it that is a good one like how you guys just always look at me and like wait for me to are you gonna get it stephanie yeah finish the lyric one of these days you'll finish the lyric and then you'll be like boom yeah just like that it's gonna happen okay name it well, did we do it? We did it's it. It's been done. It's been done. Check uh, mark. Check mate. Check. You can check the mark. <laughs> check mark. And we won this round. So it's game, set, match. I win. Check mate. Thanks, guys. Tic tac toe. Pretty excited about this series. Looking forward to see you and the people you're bringing. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I tell you, if you would have them write my name on who invited you so I can get something cool. Right? Yeah. That works. I think you would totally get all the cool yeah, things. Yeah. And then when somebody asks, tell them Stephanie told you to do it. Hey, we'll see you next time. Till then, the warehouse is closed. Mm-hmm. I ended that with a question. I told I mean, you to the stop. warehouse is closed. Listen, I've told you, stop looking at me whenever you say that because I feel like you want me to say the warehouse is closed. The warehouse is closed. <laughs> <laughs>